Hi guys, today I'm reviewing the Ninja Foodi Digital Air Fry Oven. It weighs about 18 and a half pounds and is 1800 watts. The unit is large as you can see, measures 20 inches across, 8 inches in height, and 15 inches deep. The interior dimensions are 13 inches by 13 inches. You have 3 inches above the rack. The cord length is 30 inches. There's a quick start guide that gives you information on the 8 different functions, a full user manual, and a recipe book, with some tips on using the unit, as well as 15 recipes, including chicken wings, breakfast hash, sheet pan meals, meatloaf, and stuffed shells. There's also a cooking chart for the different functions, with the type of food, the amount, how to prepare it, the temperature and cook time. There are also a couple of accessories that you can buy separately, like a casserole dish and a muffin tray. Of course this unit is large and will take up a lot of counter space, but the good thing is you can flip this up to save some space. Hold the handle on each side and it flips up. But now it takes up very little space. While I have this up, push this button in the middle and the back panel comes down. Usually with toaster ovens, it's impossible to clean the entire bottom since it's hard to reach inside. So this is a great feature. On both sides there are air outlet vents and intake vents, so don't block them while you're cooking. With this Ninja you get the air fry basket. Sheet pan, wire rack, and a crumb tray. The crumb tray goes on the bottom below this heating element. The rack goes on the bottom rails. The rack should always be in the oven. Sheet pan goes on top and the air fry basket goes in the top rails. When you first get the unit, wash all four of these with warm soapy water and dry. This unit has eight functions. Air fry, air roast, air broil, bake, dehydrate, keep warm, toast, and bagel. So this ninja is trying to combine an oven, air fryer, and toaster all in one. I'll show you how food is cooked with most of the functions so you can see how it works. The dehydrate function I'll probably do in a separate video since it takes a long time plus this video is already going to be long enough. If you want to try this ninja air fryer oven I put a link in the description below. On the control panel here is the power button to turn the unit on and off the light button to turn the light on inside the oven while cooking. The light turns on automatically 30 seconds before the cook time ends. Use the time slice to set cook time or number of slices for toast. Use the dial to adjust. Temp darkness is to set the temperature and darkness for toast. Use the dial to select the function and press the button to start cooking. During cooking, press it again to pause or turn the dial to add more time. The time and temperature will be displayed up here. If you choose toast or bagel, slice and dark will be displayed. And pre is displayed while the oven is heating up. When the unit is hot and ready, hot will be displayed. When the unit is ready to be flipped for storage, flip will be displayed. Since everything is displayed for you, it's very easy to use each function. It's best to use silicone tip tongs to avoid scratching. I'm going to cook four salmon fillets on the baking sheet. I've brushed the salmon with oil, salt and pepper. You can see there's space enough to put at least two more fillets. Turn the unit on. Choose air broil. The default cooking time and temperature is always going to be displayed up here. You can set the time for up to 30 minutes. There's no temperature setting with air broil, it's just low or high. I'll leave it at 10 minutes and low. With air broil, there's high heat from the top and medium fan speed. Leave the rack on the bottom and put the baking sheet on top. Press the button and the timer counts down. There's no preheating with the air broil function. Here's the heating element up top. I don't know if you heard that, but um, of course you did because I almost jumped out of my skin. Um, the pan warps um, when it's very hot and that's what happens in a standard oven also. It'll go back to its original shape when it cools down. It's perfectly normal. That's the light turned on. The pan is not very loud and it sounds like a low fan. Ten minutes are up, the unit beeps and you'll see end displayed and hot displayed. 
Turn the unit off. If you touch the fish in the middle and it's almost firm, it's cooked. These are thick salmon fillets. If you're using thinner fillets of fish, of course, it'll just take you a few minutes to broil. All of the pieces look evenly browned on top. The fish is opaque and it's cooked, but the middle, of course, is the thickest part and it could use another minute. I'll cook for another two minutes. Some people eat salmon medium rare, so it'll be pink in the middle, like you saw when I first took it out after 10 minutes. So it's really up to you how long you want to cook it for. About 10 minutes for medium rare on low. If you want to cook it all the way, about 12 minutes. It's completely cooked, it's juicy, it's got some color on top. It's really tasty, simple to make, and requires very little effort. Comes off the pan easily. Just make sure to use a silicone spatula. Now I'll show you the toast function. With toasting, there's even heat from the top and the bottom. There's no fan. Use the wire rack. I should be able to fit nine slices of bread. If you squeeze them together a little, the nine slices will fit. This is just plain white bread. Choose toast. Press the time slice button and turn the dial to choose nine slices. Nine is displayed. Press temp darkness and then use the dial I'm gonna go with four bars. You can go up to six bars. And press the button. The timer is at five minutes and 20 seconds. There's no preheating, it's just gonna count down. There's steam coming out of the oven door, and that's normal. After five minutes, all the slices of bread are pretty evenly toasted. If you like your toast golden brown like this, choose four for darkness. It's nice to be able to make nine slices at once so nobody has to wait for their toast. And here's what the other side looks like. The oven is very hot, especially up top here, so be careful. I'll get all the toast out and then we'll make some bagels. You can definitely fit six halves, maybe seven. Nine would be a little tight. Of course, it depends on how big your bagels are. Choose bagel. Slices, six, and the darkness setting, three bars. It's five minutes and 10 seconds. With the bagel setting, there is heat from the top and bottom. The heat from the top is supposed to be lower than the bottom, which doesn't make that much sense to me because the top of the bagel is what needs to be more browned. But I did toast bagels the other day and they came out perfect. So I guess it doesn't really matter where the heat comes from. 30 seconds before the time is up, the oven light comes on. Hot. It's lightly toasted all over. It's pretty even. And the other side is also toasted. I wouldn't go higher than the three bars because then the bagels would get too dark and crunchy. Again, it's a large unit so you can make three or four bagels at the same time. When the oven cools down, you definitely want to clean out the crumb tray. It's best to clean the crumb tray after each use. You don't have to wash it, just take all the crumbs and seeds off with a towel. When I use the unit, my tendency is to try to grab the middle to open the door, but remember the handle is on the side. It's not in the middle like most ovens. The glass on the top gets very hot, so be careful. Now I'll heat up a frozen pizza using the bake function. Use the rack and the baking tray. I put the frozen pizza on the baking sheet and the pizza measures 11 inches. Before you put the pizza in, you have to heat up the oven. Choose bake. You can set the temperature anywhere from 250 to 450 degrees and the time for up to two hours. I'll set the time to 12 minutes and the temperature to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. Pre is displayed so the oven is heating up. The timer counts down once the oven is hot. Do 
during baking, there's high even heat from the top and the bottom with no fan. Looks good, the cheese is melted, it's hot, crust is crispy. You can see the cheese has gotten a little golden here around the edges. 10 to 12 minutes should be good for a pizza this size. It's hot and crispy. If you don't want the crust this crispy, cook for 10 minutes instead of 12. Now I'll use the air roast function to cook these chicken thighs. These are bone in and skin on. I've washed these thighs, patted them dry with paper towels, and put a blend of seasonings on top. I have four thighs on the tray and you can see there's plenty of space left. You can fit about five more thighs on the tray. So for a total of about nine thighs. I left the space empty intentionally because towards the end of the thighs being cooked, I'm going to add some asparagus. These are almost penciled thin and will cook very quickly. Choose air roast. The default of 325 degrees and 15 minutes. You can set the time for up to two hours and the temperature from 250 degrees to 450 degrees. I'm going to set the time to 25 minutes and the temperature to 400 degrees. and it's preheating. Air roast works with even heat from the top and the bottom with medium fan speed. With the roast function, you can reduce the cooking time by 30% and temperature by 25 degrees Fahrenheit when compared to a standard oven. With all this extra space here, you can make a complete meal by putting some cut up potatoes, broccoli, carrots, really any vegetable. It's been about five minutes and you can see the chicken is already sizzling. When the oven's finished preheating, the timer automatically counts down. So if your ingredients are not ready yet, you can press the start pause button. It'll pause the timer and then when your ingredients are ready, put the ingredients in the oven and just press it again to start cooking. During cooking, you can also add time by using the dial. The chicken is browning really quickly, so I'm going to turn the temperature down to 375. There's 10 minutes left. The thigh in the front is more brown than the rest, so I'm just going to turn the pan around. Depending on what you're making, you can definitely flip your food with tongs halfway through cooking. These chicken thighs don't need to be flipped, so I'm just going to leave them alone. 25 minutes are up. Looks nice and crispy. They're not fully cooked though. They'll need a couple more minutes. I'm not going to add any oil to the asparagus. I'm just going to put the asparagus here with a little salt and pepper because the grease from the chicken will get on the asparagus. I'm just tossing the asparagus with some of the fat from the pan. It's not just fat, it has a lot of flavor from all the seasonings. I'll set the temp to 350 degrees. And the time to five minutes. Five minutes are up. You can see the asparagus is bright green. It's very thin, so it is cooked. I'll take the asparagus out. I'll check the temperature. It's about 185. Chicken's supposed to be about 190. I'll set for two more minutes at 350. And the chicken's done. I had checked the temperature of the biggest thigh. The smaller ones were already done. Chicken thighs will take anywhere from 25 to a little over 30, depending on the size of the thighs. Take the thighs out and let them rest for a few minutes before cutting into them. The skin's nice and crispy. The meat's juicy and perfectly cooked. Skin's the best part. This is one and a half pounds of russet potatoes that I've peeled and cut up. They've been soaking in water for 30 minutes. I'll drain these, pat them dry, and toss them in a tablespoon of oil. Choose air fry, 25 minutes. And 400 degrees. 
Let it preheat. Air fry works with high heat from the top and bottom and maximum fan speed. The time can be set up to one hour and the temperature is 250 degrees to 450 degrees. It's done heating. Press pause. When you're air frying, you're going to use the basket with or without the sheet pan. If you're cooking something greasy, definitely use the sheet pan. The crisper basket goes on top and the basket is right underneath. Press the dial to start cooking. You can shake the basket or use tongs to stir the french fries halfway through cooking. And they're cooked. They're not all going to be evenly browned. You'll see some white and some golden brown along the edges. They have a pretty good texture. Make sure to add the tablespoon of oil, otherwise um, it'll taste a little dry and crackly. Put these on a plate and sprinkle salt over them right away. To clean, the air fry basket and sheet pan are dishwasher safe. The wire rack and crumb tray are hand wash only. Wipe the inside with a soft, damp sponge and dry it. You saw how this ninja did on toast, bagels, broiling salmon, roasting chicken, asparagus, and air frying. It's versatile and easy to use. Preheating takes just one minute. There's plenty of space inside to cook up to a 13 inch pizza, nine slices of toast, and nine chicken thighs. You can also use oven safe containers in this unit. Although the unit is large, you can flip it up for storage, which is a great feature. If you want to try this Ninja air fryer oven, I put a link in the description below. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more reviews. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.